Tonight we're being to, so we're going to start into chapter number one in the book of Leviticus, of, uh, not Leviticus, what is this thing? You know what? I, I wrote down Leviticus and it's, maybe it's easier to spell than Deuteronomy. Uh, you know, what do you think? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put a line through that one and put Deuteronomy. Okay. And uh, I'll change that but before next week, I promise you. Uh, but chapter number one in the book of Deuteronomy. The first verse says, These be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel on this side of Jordan, in the wilderness, in the plain, over against the Red Sea, between Paran and Tophel, and Laban and Hazroth, and Dizahath. Dizahab. Now, that's, that's a lot of... That's a lot. It was, where was it? It was on the other side of the Jordan. And uh, they haven't crossed over yet, in other words. They're, they're there. They're, uh, you know, they're getting ready. Uh, they're putting everything together. I, I imagine they were, uh, they were shining up all, their, all of their war weapons and, and different things and getting ready to go. Uh, you know, they didn't need a whole lot of stuff for, uh, for the first battle. Because uh, we can, you can remember in the book of Joshua how how the walls fell down and and, and they went in and and uh, won the victory there. Uh, so uh, as, as we're as we're looking at this, uh, hearing the words, this is what this is what he's trying to get us to see in this book uh, in in the Bible, and these are the words which Moses spake. Some people might say, you know, well, we don't really know whether they were the, the original words or whether they were the this or that or the other, you know, but I'll tell you one thing. Uh, if, it, if Moses said it, and Moses was a servant of God, and uh, if he was a man of God, and he always, uh, always followed what God said to do, uh, except for one time, you know, and it's just that one time that kept him from being able to go into the land and see the land that they were going to inherit. All, all those 40 years wandering around out there, and at the end of those 40 years, he, he uh, you know, God's, God tells him to do something, and, uh, you know, and, and he, let his, he let his anger get the best of him. He got out there, and he, he saw the people were complaining and whining about didn't have any water to drink, and God said, I want you to go out there, and I want you to take your rod with you, and I want you to go out. Why did he want him to take his rod with him? Because he knew what he was going to do. God knows everything. I mean, there's nothing that, that, that we can do that God doesn't know in advance that we're going to do it. So we might, as well, we might as well realize that when we mess up, he already knows about it. He knew that we were going to. He didn't want us to, but, he, but he, you know, we, we, we're, we're the, that kind of people. All right, and so the... the, the uh, all of this is, is the words that he spoke to Israel. And, and uh, this, whole, this whole book, all the way down to this, the last chapter and the last couple of paragraphs, uh, those, are, those are the words of Moses. And Moses, being a man of God, a servant of the Lord, he, he, he told them exactly what God said. He didn't, he didn't leave any words out because he's added some things in in this that they didn't tell us about in the book of Numbers or over in Exodus. He's added some things in there, and uh, that, no, some of those things we're going to be looking at tonight. All right, and so uh, uh, the, the first thing we're talking about is hearing. You know, what, what, do, we, what do we do? Uh, uh, we're going to hear the word of God. We're going to hear the word of God. And what we do with it, then that's up to us. God, God is not going to make us do anything. That's, what, that's why we have a free will. We have a will. We can do it, do it if we want to, and if we don't want to, he'll say, well, okay, i got somebody else that can do that, but don't think that you're going to be blessed, you know, because we're... Uh, we're not going to have the things that God wants us to have by telling him no. 
You know, God always wants to hear yes. You know, here am I, send me. Wasn't that what Isaiah said? And, and look at that. Isaiah got to write 66 books, in the, uh, uh, 66 chapters in the Bible. And, uh, you know, why, why, did, why did he get to do that? Because he was willing to go. He was willing to be sent. And that's what God wants is willing vessels to, to go out and to do his work. All right, and then verse number two, he tells us, uh, he gives us some information that we, we weren't given before. He's got it in a parenthesis, and a, uh, that's called a parenthetical statement. And uh, uh, he's got several of those in, in, the, in this book, but number, verse number two says, there are 11 days journey from Horeb by the way of Mount Seir unto Kadesh Barnea. Kadesh Barnea was where they were going. If, if things had gone just the way God planned for them to go, they would have marched right on into the land and taken the land and been in living in the land for 40 years after, after they had left God out. You know, they, 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 were, they were wandering around on the desert. But they could have been in, in the land enjoying the fruits of the land. Enjoying the best of God's blessings for them. But, but they didn't. And uh, <clears throat> I think sometimes our, uh, our, our churches in America especially, we've, we've, uh, our churches have lost their, the, the guidance of, of, of God's Holy Spirit. And, and when they've gone the way of the world, so they, they, they're, they want to be more worldly. They want to be more, they want to get more people in, so they've got to be more worldly to do that. And, and, that's, and that's not the way God intended for it to be. God intended for us to, do, to be holy, for he is holy. Now, does, does that mean that we've got to be different from everybody else? We don't have to be, but, but, but uh, we will be. If we're following him and people will, will notice that and people will say, you know, they'll say about you, Hey, well, there's that Holy Joe, you know, I'll take that as a badge of honor when somebody says something like that to me and they say it about me and you know, well, he, he thinks he's the only spiritual guy around. No, I don't think I'm the only spiritual guy around, but I think I, I, I want to be one. And if there's more than one, then, then there ought to be, you know, this world ought to be turned upside down for God. You know, I think it was, was D.L. Moody that said something like this. He said, uh, the world has not yet seen the effect on, on the world's, uh, on the complete world view and everything else uh, be, uh, that could be made by one man who was totally given over to God. Hey, we, 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 you know, we could be the the one. We could be the one, but we can't be the one if we're if we're hiding in in the in the, just just in the confines of this building, because they they won't uh, you know people aren't going to come here if, unless we invite them. And if we don't invite them, you know, they, I don't even think they, they think they're welcome here. You know, but the, the Bible, this, is for, this place is for everybody. You know, Christ, Christ died for the whole world. And, uh, you know, everybody. And so as he, as he begins to speak uh, there, uh, and he tells us, uh, tells us that uh, it's 11 days journey by the way of Mount Seir, unto Kadesh Barnea. Now that's where they were headed when they left Mount Horeb, which was the mountain of God, where, where God had given the, the Ten Commandments to, you know, somebody, somebody says, well, I thought that was Mount Sinai. Yeah, well, they called it Sinai because it's in the Sinai Desert. Uh, but it was, it was Mount Horeb. And, and, they, and, he, and he went and he, and, he, uh, and he was leading them along by the, the, the pillar of a cloud by, the, by day and a pillar of fire by night. <clears throat> and all they had to do was follow and trust him, believe. 
That's where they had their problem. They never fully believed him in the beginning. You know, you know. Sometimes people go to the altar and they they uh, and they have a feeling, and and they they come up and say, "I'm saved. I'm I'm, I'm saved. And I'm born again." Other people, they're in the hospital, and they the doctor says uh, there's only a fifty percent chance you're going to live, and you live, and you say, "Well, God saved me." You know, well, He might have saved your life, but what about your soul? You know, the soul, uh, uh, I, 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 uh, in a church that I uh, pastored for a couple of years up in Bogart, Georgia, they, uh, there was this, uh, there was one of the men uh, in the family that, uh, that was in the church, and, and it was most of the church, basically. Uh, we had a small congregation, just like, just like we have here. <clears throat> but, you know, as, as we, as, as uh, I went to visit him one time in the hospital, and he had a, he had a, 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 an aneurysm in his in his aorta, and uh, you know, and he thought he was going to die. And uh, you know, I went in. And I told, I asked him, and I said, well, "Are you born again? Are you saved?" And he says, "Yeah, I don't, God saved me the, uh, uh, the last time I was in the hospital." And I said, "Well, tell me about it. Let me let me let me re- rejoice with you in it." And he said, uh, "He said, well, you know, he 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 had the doctors there, and and they fixed me, and 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 I was saved." And I said, no, 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 that's, that's not the way it is. I said, I said, we have to believe. We have to trust. It's, it's by faith. Salvation is by, uh, by grace through faith. And, and uh, you know, and he didn't get saved that day. Uh, but uh, I'll tell you what, uh, he was driving home one day. Uh, and he worked for the Walmart company. <clears throat> and he turned off of uh, of Highway 316 to go home, <clears throat> and uh, a car. Uh, he was hit head on by a, of all things, a Walmart truck. He almost he was almost killed, uh, but he, he couldn't walk anymore after that. He he was in a wheelchair. <clears throat> you know what? But uh, he got to thinking. I I hope he got to thinking about what we were talking about that day. But I think he had heard that story before. And, uh, you know, and he got saved. And praise God for that. And he, di- he died not too long after that. And, uh, you know, <clears throat> he, his, his whole story has, has, is not, uh, you know, the doctor saved me. It was Jesus Christ saved me after that. You know, and uh, he, he could have, you know, he could have gotten mad at God. Oh, God, why did you let that truck run into me like that? And, uh, you know, what? God sometimes gets our attention in, in odd ways and in, in different ways. 11 days, <clears throat> 11 days, you know, 11 days journey, that's not very far. If you're on foot, it's, it's, a, pretty good, uh, it's a pretty good hike. And uh, you're talking about uh, 2 million people walking in the same direction and, uh, for, for, you know, 11 days, and, and they arrived there. That's not that far. You know, you, you can walk about, what, 20 miles a day normally, and walking at normal speed. And uh, so uh, 11 days, that would be a little over 200 miles. And, and yet, they, uh, they, they needed, uh, they, we needed to know how long it took him to get from there to the to Cadiz Barnea. And uh, the, you know they he, they arrived at Kadesh Barnea, and uh, and they you know they thought that they were doing just just right by God, but he they were not. But it says that their eleven days journey by the uh, from Horeb by the way of Mount Seir unto Kadesh Barnea, and and you know. And that's all it would have taken, 11 days. They could have, in 11 days, they could have been in the, whole, in, the, in the promised land. The land that God had promised to Abraham and to Isaac and to Jacob. And then passed that on down to all of, the, uh, of their children, all down, down through. Even the ones that were being enslaved down there. And the, they had a land that they didn't even know they had. They, they, they didn't know that they had a, a, a land that had been promised to them. 
Now, I'm, I'm sure they'd heard some stories about, you know, hey, you know, uh, you know Abraham is our, is our father, and, and God made promises to him. And yet, they didn't believe. They were still unbelieving people. You go over to Israel today, and you'll, you'll have a hard time finding a, a, an Israeli who's a believer, even in the Jewish ways, because they, they, uh, they've lost their way. They, they, they've got a veil over their heart. That's what Paul told us in Romans uh, chapter 9 and 10 and 11. And they, they, got a, they got a veil over their heart, and they, they can't see they can't see what God is doing with them. <clears throat> and in, uh, so he, he said in uh, verse number three, it came to pass in the 40th year, in the 11th month, on the first day of the month. Hey, you know, God keeps records. He, he keeps solid records. He knows, he, you know, whatever he, he keeps, it's always right. It's always right. And so what was it? It was 40 years. 40, 40 years after they had left over there in uh, Ramses of Egypt and uh, had come into the, uh, the place where God wanted them to be. And it, and it was 40 years, 11th month and the first day of the month, and then Moses spoke unto the children of Israel. According to all that the Lord had commanded him, uh, had given him in commandment unto them. After he had slain Sihon, the king of the Amorites, which dwelt in Heshbon, and Og, the king of Bashan, which dwelt in Astaroth and in Drei. On this side of Jordan in the land of Moab began Moses to declare this law, saying. So all that, that he said there, he has given us a, a, a little brief picture of things that occurred that we, didn't, that we didn't see or know about other than the things that they said, you know, that Moses uh, took, took, his, took his armies and they defeated Sihon and defeated Og, you know. If you had a name like Og, you know, that just that doesn't sound like a, a winning uh, king, you know. <laughs> uh, but he was, uh, he was uh, one of the Anakins. And uh, that means that he, was, he came from a, a, a long line of giants. And, uh, you know, hey, uh, long line of giants. And an Og, you know, if anybody, probably if anybody uh, said anything about his name, they didn't, they didn't come out of it too well. Amen? Uh, and so notice that uh, uh, this was all done, and, and he said this is going to happen after that... Sihon, the king of the Amorites, has been eliminated, and, and uh, Og, the king of Bashan. And, and all of these, this goes on. He says it's on this side of Jordan, and the land of Moab began Moses to declare the law, this law. And it, this is a law. This is more than just, this is more than just a, uh, a group of things that, that it would be a good idea if you did, <clears throat> or you might want to. Uh, these are these are commandments. This is a law, and the 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 Lord spake. He says, "The Lord our God spake unto us in Horeb, saying, Ye have dwelt long enough in this mount. How long did they stay there in Horeb? It was almost two years. Could you imagine? You know, he he told he told the people, you know that." You know, hey, your, your group, this group over here, you're going to be taking down the tabernacle. And, you know, after they had put it up, uh, they, they, uh, they were waiting, and, you know, they were waiting, and they were waiting. And, and uh, what were they waiting on? <clears throat> they were waiting on that cloud by day and that fire by night to move off of the, ten, of the tabernacle. And, and uh, they were to follow it. God was leading them all the way. They didn't have to decide Hey, which is going to be the best way for us to go? Uh, would y'all would y'all watch for the exit uh, on the on the expressway down here? You know, and uh, you know, and by the way, if, if you're driving with me, uh, you're going to turn around sometime and go back and uh, and find the road that you were supposed to go down. That's that's the way it does for me. 
I, I think Israel might have been that way. Uh, only it took 40 years to get back, you know. So they, they may have been uh, like, like, uh, like me. You have dwelt long enough in this mount, he said. Hey, I've, I've taught you. I have, I have given you the law. I have taught you the law. I have taught you how to make this, this, this dwelling place for me uh, to be in the midst of you. I, I've, given you I've given you everything, and that's time for you to move on. It's time for us to go. And he intended for this is only take 11, 11 days. An 11-day journey lasted over 40 years. Isn't that crazy? It's, it's crazy because they could have just been there and, and had all the joy of the promised land. It was a land flowing with milk and honey. It was a land of plenty. And, and yet they didn't, they didn't uh, want to just go that way. All right, and so <clears throat> Moses began to speak unto Israel and Horeb. And uh, he, he says, you've dwelt here long enough. Turn you and take your journey. Behold, I've set the land before you. The Lord your God hath multiplied you as the, day, as the stars of heaven for multitude. And then Moses, Moses gives us one of these parenthetical uh, things, this, this little parenthesis there. He has a parenthetical statement. The Lord God of our fathers make you a thousand times so many more and bless you as he hath promised. A thousand times, you say. That's a lot. And it is. If there's a two million, that, that would be uh, a thousand times two million. Wow, that's a lot of folks. That'd be a big group. That would be a really big group. And so as, as, as he goes down through, he's, he gives us this, uh, this understanding that if, if the Lord was to make you that many more, it would be all because he has promised you to do that, just that, to be a, uh, as many as the stars are in multitude. How many people know how many stars there are? You ever counted them? No, nope, we can't see them all. We can't see all of the stars up there. Up there. Uh, th there's people that, that have tried to, to uh, figure out how many stars there are. And, uh, you know, and they get way up in the billions and trillions and, and all those, and, and they don't know. They can't know. The, the, only, the only way you could know is if you had made them. And the only one that's made them is God himself. And so uh, he tells us this, uh, and uh, he says, How can I myself alone bear you, your cumbrance and your burden and your strife? Moses is now beginning to feel a little bit, a little, little bit like, uh, you know, this is, this is too big for me. This is too big for me. I can't, I can't handle all of these people. And so... Uh, and he answered me and said, the, the thing which thou hast spoken is good for us to do. What was that? He says, in verse 13, he said, Take your wise men and understanding and known among your tribes, and I will make them rulers over you. And what does he mean by rulers? He means that he's going to put some people in there that's going to have a little authority, and they're going to exercise that authority when you have questions that, you, that we can't answer. All right, so, uh, so he answered me and he said, the thing which thou hast spoken unto, uh, is good for us to do. So he's, Moses said, I took the chief of your tribes, wise men and known, and made them heads over you, captains over thousands, captains over hundreds, captains over fifties, and captains over tens. How many, how many captains do you think they would have had in, to, to, to be over these two million people? Now, I'm saying two million, but, but you know, we don't know how many uh, there were in, in the, this, the nation of Israel. But there was a lot of people. And so they, he took all these and he, he made them officers among the tribes. Now, when somebody had a disagreement or whatever, they would go to this first officer. They would go to the one over the ten. And uh, it'd, be like, it'd be like our court system, you know, 
you go to the magistrate court, and then you go to the, the, the Supreme Superior Court, but then there's the appellate court, and, uh, and then there may be several le levels of the appellate court, and then you've got the Supreme Court, you know. So eventually, they would have to get back to Moses if there was a question that they really couldn't answer. But, but by the time the guy with the tens uh, got, got up to the 50s, he handed it over to the 50 guy, and he'd take, he take it on from there. And then he, he handed it to the, to the hundreds guy, and then he'd hand it to the thousand guy. And if, if the thousand guy couldn't, couldn't, you know, it's getting a little complicated. But, you know, that's, that's just the way, the way God is. He is complicated in his simplicity. So he's, he's making it simple for them. You got somebody there that's going to listen to you, and he's going to he's going to do what uh, what I tell him to do for for your sake. And so he says, uh, and I charged your judges at that time, saying, Hear the causes between your brethren, and judge righteously between every man and his brother and the stranger that is with him. You shall not respect persons in judgment, but you shall hear the small as well as the great. Should not be afraid of the face of man, for the judgment is God's. And the cause that is too hard for you, bring it to me, and I will hear it. And I commanded you at that time all the things which you should do. And so he says, when the, and when we departed from Horeb. So now, now the scene shifts back to Horeb. You know, we've been on the journey 11 days, you know, but now we're back to Horeb. And, and uh, we are, we're looking at uh, the people of Israel are ready to go and ready to march. All right, and so we, he tells them that when we departed from Horeb, we went through all that great and terrible wilderness, which you saw by the way of the mountain of the Amorites, that Mount Seir, as the Lord our God commanded us, and we came to Kadesh Barnea. And I said unto you, ye are, <clears throat> ye are come to the mountain of the Amorites, which the Lord our God doth give unto us. Behold, the Lord thy God hath set the land before thee. Go up and possess it, as the Lord God of the fathers hath said unto thee, Fear not, neither be discouraged. Now, what happened to the people? They didn't take, they didn't take that, uh, that last bit of, of advice. Don't, don't be discouraged. Uh, be 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 courageous, you know. What did God? What did he? What did Moses? What did God say to Joshua when he was, when he, when God said, "I want you to cross on over." He and uh, Joshua, you know, he was he was sort of like Moses. He said, he says, "I don't think I can do this," and uh, he's and God said, "Well, don't worry about it. I can take care of it." And you know what? If we'll just remember that. God is going to take care of it. We don't have to. We're getting into God's way if we try to do what God is, is uh, doing for himself. So he says in verse 22, You came near unto me, every one of you, and said, We will send men before us, and they shall search us out the land, and bring us word again by what way we must go up, and by what cities we shall come. There's something wrong with this statement. There's something wrong with this God didn't tell them to, to set, set up 10 men or 12 men and then, and then uh, see if it's okay to go into this land. It might not be so good. It might not be as good as what we think. And, and uh, Moses said, in the, th the same place, priest, pl uh, the same pleased me well. Sometimes your tongue gets over your eye tooth and you can't see what you're saying. And the same pleased me well, and I took twelve men of you, uh, one of a tribe. And they turned and went into the mountain, and they came into the valley of Eskel, and searched it out. And they took of the fruit of the land in their hands, and they brought it down unto us, and brought us word again, and said, It is a good land which the Lord uh, your God doth give us. <clears throat> and then he uses this long word, notwithstanding. Notwithstanding. You would not go up. Oh my goodness! They 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 uh they thought, ah, we can't do this. 
This is, this is too big for us. We can't. When we can't, God can. When we can't, God can. All right, and so he, notwithstanding you, would, but you rebelled against the commandment of the Lord your God. They didn't just come, you know, go against Moses' word. It was the Lord their God. That. And he says, you murmured in your tents and said, because the Lord hated us, he hath brought us forth out of the land of Egypt to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites to destroy us. Why would God do that? He wouldn't. No. See, that's... That's what happens when man gets to thinking. And sometimes his thinking is stinking. Amen. So he murmured in your tents and said, Because the Lord hated us, he hath brought us forth out of the land of Egypt. God didn't do that because he hated them. He did it because he loved them. By the way, who was it that asked him? Who cried out to him? Who begged him to come and send a deliverer? It was that same group of people. <laughs> it was them. And, and, he, and God, God answers their prayer. And then they say, well, I don't think we wanted it to be this way. You know, they wanted it their way. He says, whither shall we go up? Our brethren have discouraged our heart. <laughs> you know, there were 10 guys up there uh, of the 12 who said, well, you know, we, we, you know, yeah, yeah, there's this, all this food and everything, and there's all these fruits and everything, all these, the houses are already there and everything. He said, but, but there's giants down there. There's giants in that land. And, and they've, got, they've got walled cities, and they've got big armies, and they scared us. Now, who, who, what, who didn't get scared? The only two that was going to be allowed to go into the land. Joshua and Caleb. And Joshua and Caleb came down saying, Hey, come on, boys. Get your sword. Let's go get them. We can go in. We can do this. God is going to go in there before us. And that's one thing they, they, they didn't believe. They didn't believe that God would be there helping them. You know, I think sometimes we don't, act, we don't expect our prayers to be answered because we don't ask them in faith. We ask our prayers and say, Lord, uh, Lord, if you, know, if you can hear me, you know, first of all, he's not hard of hearing. He knows he, he can hear us just fine. We don't have to holler. We don't have to whisper. We can just, he hears us just fine. He's got, he's got the best ears. He's, his eyes go to and fro, uh, but his ears also go in there listening to everything everybody says. So when you, when you, when you think nobody's listening, God is. So don't, so be careful. Or so the, the people is greater and taller than we. The cities are great and walled up to heaven. To heaven? No, they're not that, they're not that big. And they're not bigger than God. <clears throat> By the way, there's nothing bigger than God. Nothing that, that can come against us, that can defeat us, and make us discouraged, that is bigger than God. You know, God is always above all of the circumstances that we have. <clears throat> so notice what all, what all he said there. And moreover, <clears throat> moreover, we have seen the sons of the Anakims there. Then I said to them, <clears throat> Dread not, neither be afraid of them. The Lord your God, which goeth before you, he shall fight for you. All right, he's already done this. He, you know, he was at the, the Red Sea <clears throat> holding back the Egyptian army with a cloud and with a fire. The Egyptian army couldn't go anywhere. They couldn't come down there to get them. And God just sat, stayed there until they all got halfway across the Red Sea. And then God came down and, and followed them along. And, and, Egypt, and Egyptians, oh, they thought they could, 
just go right on in there after them. And they got in there about halfway, and all the people was, was over on the other shore. And God said, uh, <clears throat> waters, cover them up. And he did. They, they all drowned right there in the middle of the Red Sea. What a sad thing. What a sad day that was for the Egyptians. They didn't believe God either. <clears throat> Pharaoh said, who is this God? Who does this God think he is? You know, hey, they, he said the wrong thing. Because that he woke up one day and his, his son was dead. And that's the God who has life in his very hands. All right, and he said, and that was when he said, y'all go on, y'all get out of here. Don't, don't look, turn around and come back or anything. You know, so he, uh, <clears throat> he said, the Lord thy God goeth before you. He shall fight for you. According to all that he did for you in Egypt before your eyes. He said, all this, all this that you saw, all this that went before you, have you forgotten how that God had brought you out? He says, <clears throat> yet in this thing, ye did not believe the Lord your God, in verse 32. Yet in this thing, ye did not believe the Lord your God. I, believe, I would have believed him if, if, if I had seen him open up the Red Sea and let us walk through and dry land. If he had had water come out of the rock for us in the middle and, and a river running down through the, 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 the wasteland uh, in the middle of the desert, hey, I, had, I believe that I'd believe him. But they didn't want to believe. They, they, they liked the idea of having a God that you couldn't see. You know, how many people have seen God? No man has seen God at any time, the Bible says. Yeah, nobody has. Now Moses saw the hinder parts of, of God's glory, and, uh, and, and he was different. He was never the same. I mean, his, his face glowed because he saw the glory of God. And he goes on down and he, and he says, uh, you, you, just, you didn't believe God. And he went, uh, who went in the way before you to search you out of place for pitch your tents in, in fire by night, and, and what you should do, but go by cloud by day. And the Lord heard the voice of your words and was wroth and sware, saying, Surely there shall not one of these men of this evil generation see that good land which I swear to give to your fathers. Save Caleb, the son of Jephunneh. You remember Jephunneh? Jephunneh was the man that, that uh, said, if God gives us the victory, then uh, the first thing that comes out of the door of my house, I'm going to sacrifice to God. And when he got home, his daughter came out the door. His only child, his daughter, she, he was precious to her. She was precious to him, I mean. And, and, yet, they, and yet Jephunneh, being a man of God, did as his vow had said. You say, well, you know, you, you don't mean he really killed his daughter. I mean, he offered her up as a burnt offering. That, that you know, we all think, oh, that's awful. That's terrible. Uh, no, he, he was a man of faith. He believed God. And, uh, and he did exactly what God had, had told him to do. So, so uh, Joshua and Caleb, the only ones, they're the only ones that followed God with our, their whole heart and their whole mi life and their whole mind. He says, uh, verse 39, he says, Moreover, your little ones, which you say, said should be a prey, and your children, which is in that day had no knowledge between good and evil, they, sh they shall go in thither, and unto them will I give it, and they shall possess it. But as for you, turn you and take your journey into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea. Now, that's what he said the first time they were at Kadesh Barnea. And he, and he told them, you go down and you go the way of the Red Sea. You go on deeper into the Sinai Pen Peninsula. And it was nothing but a, a solid wasteland. And he answered and said, we, they, they answered him and said, we have sinned against the Lord. 
We will go up and fight according to all that the Lord had commanded us. You know, God wanted them to go on into the land and fight. But they said, no, uh, we can't do it. And so, and so after, after they said, well, we changed our mind. Well, God said, well, you can't change your mind. God, God said, I've already changed my mind. You're going into the wilderness. And you're going to, according to their own words, because they said that, uh, you know, God was going to, that it'd be better if they were dead in that wilderness. And sure enough, they all died there. And, uh, and they, they said, uh, we've sinned against the Lord. We'll go up and fight according to all the Lord had commanded us. And when, when he had girded on every man his weapon of war, they, ye were ready to go up into the hill. And the Lord said unto, unto Moses, the Lord said something to Moses here. Uh, you know, they, they were getting ready to go. Hey, and uh, says, say unto them, go not up, neither fight, for I am not among you. You know what happened to them? They got destroyed. They got destroyed because they, they could not believe God. And, said, and he said, so I spake unto you, and you would not hear, but rebelled against the command of the Lord and went presumptuously up into the hill. You know, a lot of times <clears throat> we as Christians go up presumptuously. Presumptuously means... That, that we go up in an impertinent manner. And, and we go up and you're saying, well, you know, I can, you know, I can, I can, uh, I can attack the, the fires of hell with a squirt gun, you know. You, you can't do that. You're not going to do that. So don't say that we're going to do that, you know. Some people, some people uh, have said that, and I think they've, they've been found to be wrong. You know, the Amorites that dwelt in the mountain came out against you and chased you as bees do. Have you ever been chased by bees? Yellow jackets or, or hornets? Oh, me. They, they'll chase you down. <laughs> you better run and find a place to jump in, a, a creek to jump in or something. Because you're going to have to, you, you're not going to be able to outrun those bees. But the, the, the enemy was like bees, chasing them everywhere. Chase them from one place to another and yet, you know, they, they cried and they, 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 they said, you know, we just don't understand. You know, God wasn't for us, but God was for us. But God had to teach them a lesson that they can't do it by themselves. <clears throat> they have to do it the right way. <clears throat> so he said, so you abode in Kadesh many days, according unto the days that you abode there. And they did. They, they stayed right in that place, that one place. I believe God let them look down into that valley with all that fruit and everything for many days so they, they could see what they had given up, what they had not gone and done for the Lord. And they, <clears throat> and they, and they did that. And he said, and, and, uh, it was according to the days that you abode there. Chapter number two is going to, going to tell us some more of the wanderings and the conflicts in the wilderness. Some of the things that we've never seen. We haven't seen these things because God didn't want us to see it right then. He wanted us to see, to see it later on. <clears throat> so uh, you abode in, in, the, in that one place. Now, Moses, Moses is, uh, you know, he's, he's the only one that really knows all the story. Some of those young people were too young to, to really understand what was going on. But, but now they've, they've grown up. And now they're over the age of 20, and they're, they're, uh, they're, they're living there in the land. And, I mean, they're living there at Kadesh Barnea, and they were, uh, you know, some of, the, some of them are looking at this thing, and they're saying, <clears throat> you, know, it, you know, when they got back there the second time, they were ready to go cross over uh, into the Jordan River and, and, and over into the land, <clears throat> they, they realized what they had, their parents had lost. They had lost the land. They didn't have a land. They were all buried out in the desert. Way, way out in the desert, they were buried. So chapter 2 is going to 
we're going to see a, a little bit more about what they went through as they were in this wilderness wandering. Let's pray. Father, <clears throat> we love you and we thank you so much for the word of God. And we, we just thank you so much, Lord, that we have, uh, have uh, had an opportunity to, uh, to see the, the things that God's people have gone through because they just would not believe. Simply be would, would not believe the Lord. And, and if they had just believed, it would have been so much better for them. But now they have to do, go through the, the terrible, the terrors of the wilderness. And let's pray that the Lord would bless and help us as we go through this life. That we could, we could do it in faith, believing that the Lord will be with us all the way. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen.